everything has its place. Whether it stays there or not is another story. I've been on a journey to live a more digitally minimalistic life for one year now. And within that year, I've come to learn that certain devices and certain pieces of tech need to stay in certain locations. Otherwise, I'll end up back in old habits and doom scrolling again. In order to give you a clear picture on how I generally live my life as a digital minimalist, I'm going to go through each room and which devices I use or don't use in those specific areas. Now this isn't a how-to, this is more for inspiration because I know everyone's life is different, everyone's home is different, and how you want to go about your digital minimalism journey will probably be different than mine. But I'm going to kind of do it a Bill Bryson style and go from room to room on which devices I keep there and which devices are not allowed there. So the first room we're gonna start off with is the room I'm in right now, which is my bedroom. Now, my bedroom has the strictest policy regarding which devices can come in and which devices cannot. So the first rule of the bedroom is no smartphones. Now this goes for myself. I don't impose this on my husband or my family. This is purely for myself. But as a rule together, we have a no TV in the bedroom rule as well. I know a lot of us grew up in the 90s and we had TVs in our room and our parents had TVs in their room and everyone kind of just stayed in their room. I'm the one who believes that the TV, if you have one, should be in a communal location and you can share those moments together with your family rather than going off and hiding in your room. Call me old fashioned, but I don't like TVs in bedrooms. I also don't keep my smartphone or any smart devices in my room, including my books Palma. Now my books Palma, I will get to in another room, but I found that having access to the internet kind of tempted me to download apps or still try to browse the internet in my internet free zone, which is my bedroom. I do have one device that I do permit in this room and this is a Kindle. Primarily because this is just for reading, it's an e-ink device, and I can't really access the internet and try to download apps. Even the Kindle app on this specific Kindle is so old and so slow, most of the times I can't even shop for books on this thing because it's just not, not viable. I just use it for reading. Now I do have an exception for dumb phones. If the dumb phone does not have internet access or does not have any distracting games, I do allow it to be in the room because right now I've been testing the Barbie phone and I use this actually as my alarm clock. I don't use it for scrolling or playing games, so I do permit it in the bedroom. Moving on in my home, I'm going to the main section which is the living room slash office slash dining room. It's all one room essentially, but I've divided the room into different zones where different devices live and stay. The first zone is my office nook area. So here's where I keep my laptop, my monitor. I also keep my work phone, which is my Google Pixel 8. Now this is a smartphone, but it lives in my office. I keep it there for content production, admin purposes, accessing specific apps like banking, email, and any admin that I need to do regarding healthcare or things like this. Now this device stays at my desk, most of the time it stays at my desk. Sometimes I'm wandering around the house and I find that it's in my back pocket or I'm finding it laying somewhere. So I do unconsciously wander off with it and it's a bad habit I'm trying to break. When I find it in my hand or I find it in my pocket, I look at it and I bring it back to my office area and that's where it lives, that's where it stays. I don't have any SIM cards in it. I don't need to be walking around with it. I don't have any excuse to have it outside of the office zone. I find that when I'm using a work phone, especially a smartphone for work, I really have an easier time disconnecting from it and not getting distracted as easily because I can consciously say this is a tool, I'm using it as a tool, and it's not for entertainment purposes. Not to say it doesn't happen here or there, but primarily when I'm sitting at my desk, it's not as fun to doom scroll on my smartphone. I'm usually focused on work and I use my laptop more than my phone for internet purposes. My office area is actually where I also keep my stock of dumb phones. So I'm constantly switching out my SIM cards and using different phones for different occasions. And I keep all of those dumb phones here. I don't keep my current dumb phone in this area. I usually keep it on my person or in a bag. So this is my Barbie smartphone for the moment. 
Sometimes I'm switching back to my Blackberry or I'm switching to another dumb phone and this is where I keep the ones that I switch most often. I also keep my camera equipment here, but honestly that's not something that's tempting to doom scroll on. I use it just for creating videos and that's the only time I take it out. Now moving on to a different section in my living room, I'm going to discuss kind of the main living space. So in this living space, there is a couch and there's a TV. Now the TV for myself, I have imposed some strict rules. I'm only using the TV when my family is there and we're watching something together. I have the habit before, especially if I'm alone and I'm watching the TV, I will binge watch. I will binge watch things that I don't even like and I will spend my whole day watching a TV series because I don't have any willpower to just stop and watch one episode at a time. So generally I start watching shows with my husband and I would feel terrible if I just started watching the shows that we watch together without him and binge the whole series. That would just start a whole dispute over something stupid. So honestly, I just stay off the TV. I don't use it unless I'm watching it with my family. Now on the couch itself, I do have a device dedicated to this location and this is where it lives. This is my books Pama. Now I've been using the books Pama for almost one year and it's gone through a lot of different phases and use cases. When I first got the device, I used it as a smartphone substitute. So I put all of my applications on there and I was using it kind of to replace my smartphone. Now it's gone through different phases of use cases. So it went from smartphone and then it went to a productivity device. I used it also for entertainment at one point, kind of like a tablet. Now it's moved into the phase of being my reading device and accessibility tool. I use it more than my Kindle in my bedroom because it's easier to read on. It's more hand friendly. And I also use it for accessibility reading. So I am visually impaired and I rely on apps for certain use cases like reading documents or if my eyes are really in a lot of pain and I can't read something, I'm using apps to read for me like Speechify or I'm using Seeing AI. I like these apps on this device because this device does have a camera and it can read documents to me. So it's very helpful in that use case. This device does not move from the couch. It stays there all the time. Um, I primarily use it when I have some free time or I need a break. I might read a few pages of a book or a chapter here or there. And it helps kind of de-stress me and helps me focus on something else besides work or besides doing something that I probably should be doing at that moment. The couch is kind of the central location in my living room and I do use other devices such as my music. Now my music is stored on a bookshelf behind the couch and I put it here for one primary location is that it's central to my house. So I usually keep my CD player and my wireless headphones on this bookshelf for one reason. Um, the Bluetooth is excellent on the CD player. So I will put in a CD, put in my headphones, and I'll be able to go about my house doing chores, working on scripts, writing in a journal, and being able to do things while listening to a specific CD. Now I can put my MP3 files on this CD player, which I've done before, but honestly, I've been kind of enjoying the moment of intentionally listening to CDs and listening to every song on the CD and really appreciating the music more than I used to when I was using Spotify. I hope to make another video kind of going into depths about how I use my music, how I organize my music. And if you're interested in that, let me know below and I will definitely get into making that video. Now, besides my CD player, I also have my CDs stored here. I have a boom box. I even have an old radio up here and my Lego set that I'm currently working on to build a Lego radio. So this is my music corner and I kind of dedicate it to that zone and more or less have that area to really dedicate to that hobby that I'm building. Now the other rooms of my home, such as the kitchen, the bathroom, and even the toilet or water closet, um, I don't have devices dedicated to those zones. I actually have one device which is allowed to migrate in the house. Now this device is a tablet. This tablet does have the permission to migrate around the house, but with one caveat. That caveat being it has a specific time limitation. I only allow myself to use this tablet one hour a day max. Now I can divide that time up throughout the day if needed. I can watch it all in the morning or I can watch it all in the evening. For example, I mostly use this for taking a bath and watching YouTube videos. This allows me to relax and kind of just focus 
on listening to specific channels that are uplifting or something that I really want to entertain myself, but with a limited time frame. Again, if I had full access to this device, I would probably spend 10 hours a day on it and I don't want to do that. So by giving myself the time limitation and where I can essentially use it, which is mostly in the bath, that's about it. I don't really use this device that often. I also have my shopping apps on this device. So again, having a time limitation greatly reduces my intentions to buy things I don't need or spend times on apps I don't necessarily want to. So I'm not really using my devices for social media, but I do have Reddit on this specific tablet and sometimes I do use that in my allotted time period. So globally, that's how I have my devices broken down into specific rooms. And again, I'm not perfect. Sometimes those devices wander across borders or end up where they shouldn't be. But on most days, I'm pretty respectful of the time limits, where they're supposed to be, and how I'm using those devices. Now this setup changes regularly. Um, since I've integrated more low-tech ways of managing my productivity, such as using notebooks and things like this, I find myself using less and less my office space, for example, for productivity applications, and just using a paper and pen. So I hope this was helpful and inspirational. If you have any tips or suggestions, I'm very open to that, of course. And thank you so much for watching and see you soon.